burn it up. Okay, so we got the bolt in here. Got this one tight, and this one's laying down here where it belongs, which just means it actually kind of fit. That's good. So we can see how much room we got up under here for clearances. So we're good on that part. Now we take our dash cover, lay it up on here, clear the trip knob over there, lay it down there, and see how close it is to our gas tank. Okay, so this dash cover is going to be right on top of our uh, gas tank here. Is there supposed to be like a, gr a rush washer or something on there too? Well, it's, it takes whatever it takes. See, when you tighten against this bolt right here, it dictates, when you tighten that down, the cover's, oh, gonna, it. The cover's gonna go to a certain spot. Right. Now, if you have it like this, where it's sitting right here right now in the tank, it's sitting right up this corner. So we got a gap back here, which is good, but when we're hitting here, when you tighten this down, you're basically gonna push right in the paint with the steel, you put a rubber in there, it's gonna lift the dash up, and then it's gonna dimple the dash, because the dash will still have to be tightened all the way down, it'll have a big dimple like right. this in it. So right now, what needs to happen is this dash needs to go up. The front of it? Yes, the front is low. Maybe like a, a washer, I think there's a lot of that one bolt in there, isn't there? And, yeah. Whew, no. Nice. Okay, so we gotta loosen this one up here. <clears throat> we gotta put a spacer in there. Now they already got a big stack of spacers under here, but you're probably gonna have to have more. Now when I move this up, it's gonna lower this, which means I have to bend this back up. Oh. <laughs> but actually because this was fitted, this actually worked pretty good because this is the same height as that. Now, if you look at the angle of what this is to the switch, it should be almost the same, but this one is actually downhill a little bit. Yeah, I can see it curved down. Because I did bend it a little bit. So, now what we got to do is we're going to need to... We're going to get rid of this metric bolt, because you can't even tighten this damn thing up, loosen it or anything. Stupid-ass metric hardware. Where'd my quarter drive wrench go? Never had the right wrench in front of you. Okay, here we got that one out. See, all the water, you're not going to start sweating. Oh, I started, right when you were starting to get that, I was, that's weird, man. Yeah, well. I haven't felt like that in a long time. Where just, okay, so now when this one goes up, see, this one goes down. Oh, yeah. So that's going to go way down. That might just be... It's going to be too much. We're going to have to raise this thing up more. So we're going to have to come up probably this far in the front. We're going to put more stacks of shim under here, and then that should raise this back up and keep us relatively flat. It's all part of doing the job. I told you, it was fun doing these things. Now this bike over here, we already did this one. So this dash is actually mounted right now, and you can see how we got a gap under here. Big gap right there, huge gap here, and real tight right here. This original dash, original tank, so even they don't fit. So, but at least now there's room to put a rubber in here. We trimmed it slightly through here, but we don't really want to be trimming on the stock dashes if we can avoid it. So we have to find the rubber has a lot of a lot of give on it. So I was at the SEMA show, I got a sample of a real tall rubber that might do the trick for this bike. This one here, see how we're touching? We're actually physically touching on this side. We've got a gap under here. Big, huge gap here. Mm. Same it's deal. It's touching on the front? It's, if it ain't touching, it should be. It's right there. Mm. So I don't like cutting on stock dashes, but to make this fit the stock tank, you're either going to have to dimple the tank in a little bit or you're going to have to cut the dash. So your choice, which one it's going to be. Mm. So without the market parts, we don't care. But when you're talking hundreds of dollars worth of tanks, you know, these things are $1,000, $2,000. And that dash cover is probably 100 to 200 bucks just for a bare cover. So. You don't want to be cutting up original parts too much if you can avoid it. Okay, now this should be a coarse bolt in here. And we're going to have to come up at least an eighth of an inch. And then I'm going to have to move those up a sixteenth. So we're going to need one spacer in there, two spacers here, and probably have to bend this up in the back. Oh, I see. These, these are those oblong spacers. Yeah. Well, those are just oval. Oval. Now remember, this is springing up because when I pulled it down, it's mm -hmm. it, it does that. All so. right. It wants the spacer here, but nobody put it in. They jacked it up back there, but they didn't do anything about the front. So now we need to rectify it. 
So we're going to have to do a little shimming. So fun, fun, fun. Of course, the speedo's in the way of getting to the bolts. So we have to work around that problem. There's always another headache. I'm trying to get almost all my tools out again. <laughs> okay, you got a washer box over there? Go find some 5 16 washers. That like half inch size. Yeah, 5 16 washers. You didn't have any wash washers on these things either. Does it matter how big or? Yeah, it matters. And the bolts are too short too. I think I got like two threads holding them in. What a shocker. Hard to believe they won't have the right stuff. Here's our hardware selection. So these are the factory four hole spacers that you use, four of them. So we had one bolt here and we had one bolt here. Guess which one was too short? <laughs> <laughs> now this is also a metric bolt with American threads, so the head's way undersized, so that's why the ratchet doesn't fit very well. See, it's a little short. So this bolt's a piece of crap. So we're gonna do the appropriate thing with that. Trash. Okay, so we need a lock washer, we got a stack of bolts, a dash cover. How many? Uh, so this this one here is starting to become a little bit short too, but we have enough to do it one more time with a washer, but after that we'll do it different. Okay, so what do you got here? You got some big fat ones. Those are all pretty much the same. I got a couple of the small ones. Okay. Stainless. Or one. Okay, so I'm going to put, uh, we got some half inch washers. Any bigger diameter ones in there? <coughs> small ones? I like bigger diameter where I can use them. Like Spread this? them out. More like that? Okay, these two match in the height, one this in the back. Okay, I need a bolt. You need some lock washers too, right? I need two lock washers and a bolt. All right, so I've got two equal thickness washers. Well, not really, are they? The bolts are up there? They felt the same, but they're not. How yeah, they're up front. That? About an inch? They're up there in front. All right, we're going to get some hardware. We'll be back. Okay, we're back. We got uh, two long bolts and one short bolt for the front. So the short one's the one that came out on the back holes. And then we got two longer bolts for because we got the big stack of washer in the back. So we're gonna put those in there. So what do you got for washers? We need two glass. So we're gonna put those on top of the shims? Yeah. So we have those out already, but Shim stack. Put one washer under both of those. Okay, get the inner one in there. Problem is getting past the speedometer because the bolts are a lot longer than they were. Perfect, they fit in there. That always helps. And that's the fun part. It takes 15 hands to get in here. Just run them for half of one. Side. Probably gonna bottom out before doing it all the way. 
Oh, there's none that doesn't go all the way through. And they do, but I don't know. If, and they're not always thread all the way through there. <coughs> okay, now this side here is going to be fun. Watch live PD. No. <laughs> if you keep picking that slide up, it just jams this bullet right in my knuckle over here. So if I hold it like that, it looks a lot better. Alright. Don't like that, huh? Well, my knuckle's getting bruised up. <clears throat> and this bolt here, which I thought was started, is not even started yet. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I got can't feel what's that. Damn close. Can't move the hole. Hmm. I'm starting the hole. I don't know if the bolt's uh, nicking it or what. No, it's crossed it. Good time. Okay, it's going to work. Something wrong with that bolt head. The thread had been all screwed up on it or something. It's not going. Bolt. <clears throat> you get the help you pay for. So we're going to get this nice, crusty Harley bolt. Trying to start? Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. That's a nice crusty Harley bolt that goes in. Get all that locking compound on there. <laughs> Rust. Rust. Rust and crud. We didn't know it was supposed to hit a Harley, so it goes in. Three or four washers for the front. Get the height we need. Three. Oh, seriously, you just move these in there, huh? They're supposed to get riveted in, but <clears throat> good luck on getting that. That's not even close to going. See, that's why you don't tighten the back and tighten the front ones are all, mm. all clear in. You a little wiggle in. Oh, 
this up a little bit. Okay, cover. Just above the tank all the way around now. So if there's a rubber on there, it'd keep that rubber. There ain't room for rubber right now. No. <clears throat> so you can see how close it is right here. Oh yeah. See a big gap there. Look how it overhangs the tank. Now the whole dash is moved over. We need to slide the whole dash over this way. Hmm. See we got the dash wide open mm -hmm. over here. Mm -hmm. So we're a quarter inch off in our dimension for center. We're right on top of our tank here. So which one is that? Is that so the... whatever you need for rubber right now is we need to go up. Now I bent this up a little bit and that needs to go back down a little bit. There we go. That's pretty centered. And the switch works pretty good actually. So if you're going to run with no rubber at all, this will work. But if you want to put a rubber on here, we're going to have to Move everything up a little bit. Yeah, I like how the tank actually fits the damn dash pretty nice. That's pretty close. These are way the hell off. What, what needs to be adjusted to get it to move that way? We have to loosen up these two bolt back, back oh. here and slide it over. Gotcha. If there's room to slide over that far. Don't even know if there is. So you might be able to reach up underneath there with a, with a wrench. Maybe. Let me see here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we can get up in here with this. Except we gotta get the right size. We need a half inch. Here you can hold the camera. These double box wrenches come in real handy because they're offset. Oh yeah. Allows you to get in places. Yeah. I can't see a damn thing when the light's blocked. Get back a little bit. You can't see shooting too close on the camera. Can't really see too much off an offset. So I use the offset on the inner one, but not the outer one. Just fucking reach up there with your fingers and twist it. You don't need a wrench. Yeah. I don't think that works quite that easy. <laughs> Tire. Okay. Oh yeah, it moved. Oh, came back a little bit. Got a little springy to it. Springy dingy. Well, that's pretty close. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's called force net. Now, there's a little bit of gap between the tanks, so it's not exactly 100%. Oh, oh! oh. oh my God. <laughs> Notice how he just ripped that thing off there? A little paint right there. No, no concern for the thread on his. <laughs> or the paint or anything. <laughs> no. <clears throat> I still have some more rips on there for you. Okay, so that's about where it sits. That actually gives a little bit of a gap on this side, but we still got to come up another eighth of an inch higher on the mm -hmm. hardware. So we're close, but uh, this here is all, the, the switch is good where it sits relative to that. Mm. So we've got to come up with some big spacers to get these things, we've got a big stack of spacers, we've got to start making a big thick spacer by putting that under or something. Instead of the... Yeah. So we need at least an eighth of an inch more upward movement, at least an eighth of an inch. So we got that part handled. Okay, now the wiring part, we don't know about that part yet. And 
we still have <coughs> the other tank matches this tank. That'll be the next problem. Okay, so let's hook up the battery over there. See how you get the technical part here. There yeah, we go. Pretty hard to get. <laughs> Where's the heating light switch at? Or the uh, test light? You had it last. Over here someplace. Hold on a second. Die grinder. There we go. I see the wire. If you see a wire, there's a light nearby. Okay, we need a ground. We just have to have one right here. Okay, here's a ground. Ooh, we got heat. Okay. <laughs> what's, what's this light right here? Oil pressure. Pressure. Oh, so that comes on until you start it. Hopefully it goes out. <laughs> now, this one over here is the wire to your generator. Now, I don't know why that's... Oh, oh. Yeah, that should be on right now. Yeah, why? Go. Okay, so we have an issue with some connections someplace. So what's that, the socket? No, that's might be grounding through the socket. I don't think it grounds through the socket. I think the socket's supposed to be insulated on this one. Anyway, you got a wiring issue a little bit. But okay, so there is your two idiot lights are on. Now the generator light is on because the generator is not making juice, and the oil pressure light's on because you don't have any oil pressure. And right now the tail light should be off. See, you know, back here, camera. Yeah, let's see if that comes on. It did. Okay. So that's our tail light. Now if you had an, uh, a headlight. If you touch the two uh, wires together. <coughs> this side over here. Take these two and put them together. Oh, for your brake? Yep. Either that or a... A momentary increase in voltage? Yeah. No, I was thinking reverse reverse light. Okay, <coughs> so the, uh, this is our brake light switch, and that goes way over here because the stock switch is on that side of the bike, not hmm. right here. Hmm. Okay, so that works. We're assuming this is connected. We don't know, but it should be. Okay, now the next thing is, all of this seems to be working correctly. We have to go back over here and check our ignition for a coil, which should work if I use the correct wire. So, this one is the ground because it goes to the points, so this is our hot wire. Hmm. There you go. This one's big, it's not connected. So, off, on, off, on. See, you're off, on, lights. So it stays on. So ignition stays on when the lights come on, that's a good sign. So that's a hot wire, don't touch that to anything, it's warm. Okay, now we go back up to the front of the bike. Turn the switch off. <clears throat> Notice how we have no hot wires anymore. <laughs> that is what we're looking for, huh? Okay, now you go to ignition. No hot wires anymore because there's no ignition up the head. There's no ignition up here. Oh. Okay, now we go to our, our light circuit here. So there's, the lights are now on. So, no light, no light, no light, no light. Now that's not correct. So we should have power right now to these, to these things, which we do not. Okay, so, now are they disconnected completely right now? Yes. I'm thinking this might have something to do with the reason we have no lights in the front of the back. <laughs> so they have to be connected up here too? They have to go to the switch. Everything goes to the switch. Mm -hmm. So you have separate, okay, that's right. You got, this one was the lights. Okay, so everything is connected right now, it works. The generator is connected, as far as we know, the generator is connected, the regulator is connected, as far as we know. Now, we can check the regulator by going over here. Let's see if there's juice for the regulator. One of these should be hot. Oh, hot. Okay. The green is field and red is armature, so that's connected. So, and that's a full-time hot. See, the switch is off up here. This is a full-time hot, because it goes right to the battery. Because you don't want the generator going through your electrical circuit. You want to go right out of the regulator, right to the battery. Okay. So no, that's the, that breaks the, the yeah, circuit. No stops, no errors, it, it goes. Now, if I take this, which is, I got to short it out right now. If I take these two wires over here to the coil and connect them and turn the switch on, 
Now we should have power here. So we know that wire is connected correctly. So everything that makes the bike work now from here back is connected. The only thing we haven't got connected is the headlight circuit. We don't have the handlebars connected or anything else either. So disconnect our battery for now. So now we've got to figure out what we're going to do with all this. We need a high-low switch, a horn switch. We have no horn. And this is a kickstart, so there's no starter switch. So what do you want to have on your handlebars? <coughs> what do you want on our handlebars? We don't have a horn, huh? So high low. We can put a horn on the bike. That's not hard to do. So here's our handlebars. So we have one switch here, one switch here. The long switch is high low. The short switch is a horn button. Huh. This side over here appears we have naked parts. So we only have two switches, a horn switch and a high low switch. Huh. So right now you have no horn. We got to put a switch on to cover this up. You can either connect it and make it functional and put a horn on the bike like you're supposed to. Oh, yeah. And then the high low would be down here. So we have to wire the high-low and the horn. That's going to be what those other wires are going to be used mm -hmm. So now you just figure out where you want the wires to go to. Now, factory color code on a headlight on a later bike, usually it's white and yellow or your high as, as you're going to your headlight. So this one here, I'm not sure what colors they're using. We have to pull our handy-dandy book out again. What would you call that? You call it a different name. This is called a service manual. <laughs> no, you said something else. A funny book? Comic book. Comic book, yeah. Look at the funnies in it. <laughs> half the stuff in here you can believe, the other half is make believe. <laughs> the wiring schematic seems to be a lot of make believe going on, but some of it actually does make sense at times. Okay, so right now I'm assuming that this is a headlight. Now you can't use this schematic here because this is for the next page over here. So you have to go back one page. Now Harley likes doing that for some reason. Hmm. I don't know why they do that, but they always do it. Okay, so 52 should be a headlight. Headlamp, red wire, black with red tracer. So you got a red wire, black with red tracer. <laughs> so these two here are your headlights. <clears throat> oh, okay. So you got a red wire, black. And you got a black wire with a tracer on it. Black with red tracer. Uh, that doesn't look like it's red, it looks like it's white, but those are the two headlights. There's gotcha. black and a white. Gotcha. I mean black and a red. Now, you have to figure out how your switch is going to be wired. Because <clears throat> you got a high-low switch. So here's your switches. I'm assuming this is a high-low, 27. 27 is stop lamp switch. That would not be a high low switch. That'd be a brake switch. It doesn't look like a brake switch to me, but okay. So where's our handlebar? Oh, here they are, way over here. Okay, so you got two wires and three wires. Three wires high low, and that's a horn. So 18 is our high low. Now you can obviously see the colors are very well designated. Hmm. What goes to what? <laughs> yeah, dream on, right? Okay, so we got a red and a black red. So 22, which is this here, this post here, 22 is supposed to have the red wire on it. So this wire here, which is down here, mm -hmm. is supposed to be up here on that one. Now they marked it to where the posts are, they just didn't put the wires to it. This one's tight. Where you right your feet. Oh. I need a little uh, crescent wrench. Too easy to get the socket out for it. So this is the only wire that didn't disconnect yet. Hmm. So now we got to disconnect. That's tight. Okay, we have to get some real tools now. Can't screw it around with maple leaf tools. To get a real socket. And that's hard on the thumb, see? So you have to hold that with something. I'm thinking crescent wrench might work for that. Yeah. If nothing else, I can push on it. 
That's not the right socket. There we go. This will be the next one we got to get. I think that's the right socket. <clears throat> so that's really not a circuit board. That's just... It is a circuit board. Well... You got circuits on it. It's just an old style circuit board. Right. The circuits is actually connecting them to that it's also, point, right? It's actually more, I would call it a terminal board. Terminals, yeah. Here's one. Uh -oh. What happened to Yeah, a circuit board would have tracers between them. Well, you yeah, know, it's... Right? You can call it a circuit board if you want, but it's, it's actually a terminal. Mm -hmm. It's a terminal board. That's how my dad... Uh, you can call it a terminal strip, maybe, if you want. He wired my... 56 See, this, Ford. this one has a lock washer on this one. Uh-oh. Look at that. I'm going to put that over here. Look at that. I stole it from that one down there. Okay. Now, this one over here. Ooh, there's another washer. Now, they put the washer on the bottom instead of on the top. Okay, now, where's the... Uh, the other? The black one goes on 21. This was the one right above it, which is what I figured it was going to be, too. So you put them over here where there's no room, you have to go across 15 damn wires to get to these spots. Now, we can use any position we want because mm -hmm. the board's wide open, but right. this is the correct color code for the Harley, correct terminal location. Okay, now we got a red. Uh, so we got a green yellow, and a yellow. Green. One of the, one's going to be a horn wire. I'm guessing yellow. Okay. That's the one that's marked. What? Oh, horn. Which one? The yellow. Ah, ah, good guess. Okay, so we got to find our horn. Here's your horn. It has red wire to it and a green. Oh, hold on. Went a... Green wire to it. Oh, maybe I'm moving it here. Hold on. What did you do? I moved it. Did you screw around with the server? Okay. Pull it all the way back. There you go. You spent an hour filming up close? No, no, could no see? I was just moving it. Okay. I hope. <laughs> Find out. Okay, so they have a green wire and a red wire on the horn. So, red. Looks like a B. That's black. That's an G. R. There's a G. Yeah, but see it's G here. Jump across. Turns into a black. Hmm. It's black, black now. Thing. Goes up here. Green. Black. No. 24. Comes out black. Goes into this big strip of unknown. That's the handlebar, right? I, I got confused already. Yeah, that might be the handlebar. Maybe that's what that means. Yeah, that could be what that means. And to me, it confuses the hell out of me. Okay, what I want to know is what wires go to the, which switch. Hmm. Now, they're doing a very good job of not telling me that. Now, nine. Terminal red wire, black tracer, green wire. Okay, I'm going to go with green. <laughs> it's the only one we got left. <laughs> now, where's it going to go to? Or wherever I hook it to on the other end is what it's going to be for. Okay. So, nine. Where was nine at? No. What number was that? I got confused. Okay, where's the other one comes out of the headlight? There's black, red, yellow. Okay, you come out there, it's red, it goes to 22. Out of 22, it turns into a yellow wire, a red yellow. It goes into the handlebar as a red yellow. Now those switches, they only have one wire going to them, or two? Um, and this one comes out as a black red, goes in the handlebar. Those two, both of those go in the handlebar. That doesn't make sense. It's a headlight. Huh. Well, it's a high-low switch, that's why. Okay. So this red-black, so you got, you got red-black, black-red, red-yellow. So that tells me yellow is going to be a headlight wire. It's going to power the headlight. Huh. That's what I'm going to call it. And see, there's a yellow one right here. Going over there. That's completely confusing as hell. You know, if you had to go by this book, <laughs> you'd have problems wiring your bike. 
These are stupid. They got a lot of hidden connections. It doesn't tell you anything. So where's a green? We got a green and a red. We got a green and a yellow. We got to figure out what I'm going to do. What? Well, that's all I care about. Okay, here's a yellow here. Let's come out of here. That's a green. Yellow, yellow blue. Yellow. Okay, <laughs> yellow goes to number five. See right there. Is that the generator? That's the horn. Oh, oh, the horn itself. Got it. That's a hot. Uh -huh. That's the ignition hot wire. Hmm. You want the horn to work all the time, don't you? Uh -uh. No? Well, it's going to work all the time. So number 25, which is way the hell down here, is where it's supposed to go. That's going to be a horn. Now, I don't know about you, but all these wires being as far apart as you can get is stupid. Mm -hmm. We're going to wind up changing these. Right. Okay, that leaves the green wire. Green goes way down to here. That's our light. See right here? Mm -hmm. That was our, our light terminal number two. Because mm -hmm. we had two and four for, for the light. Right. So it goes right to two. So green is headlight power. That goes into your high-low switch. That's the center wire going into the head, headlight switch. I don't know where your headlight switch disappeared to. What happened to those other handlebars? You took them home? Or are they in the box somewhere? They're in the box. Down here someplace? <coughs> the switches and all that. It's, all, yeah. it's yeah, in there, there somewhere. Switches. They're in a baggie. <clears throat> a lot of baggie here. Ah, this is a little side one. There's the one. Oh. This is not an original headlight. It appears to be missing some of the wiring that goes into it. I think we're going to need that. Yeah, we're going to need that. You all stuck in here, I can't find it. Oh, the missing uh, cover for this. For, this. for what? For, oh, for the fork. Right here. Top. See? Yeah, yeah. Camera. See the two screws in there? I told people they had two screws that had a cover that went up here. Oh, there's the missing cover. So there you go. Gotcha. So we have to find the screws to hold it. Mm -hmm. We can mount that. Come on, Jeff, there's not too much more to look at. I don't know why you got that in a chrome box. <clears throat> it doesn't jump that. Probably got it front. Hello. Yeah, you're up there making that noise up there, Tony? Come on back. <laughs> okay, so we got ugly ass pump caps. You love them things, don't you? You don't see them on the other bike, do you? Mm -hmm. That box is... Oh, there's the handlebars. Mm -hmm. No, those handlebars are for the uh, <coughs> 65. Yeah, these are for the 65? Yeah. So what do you got for the bars for this bike? Because they need these two things. And there's our wire, see? Mm -hmm. Well, the 65's already got the wires in them, right? No, 65's already got handlebars on it. Right. But you said they were the wrong ones because the other side had holes and Yeah, well, he's got road rash on oh, it, yeah. so we need these switches. Okay. Do what you need. I'll have to disassemble this stuff. All right. So we know this is the lights. This is power on the headlight switch. And then you got these are high and low beam coming out. And this is the horn switch. This oh, yellow one's for the horn. We got the visitors. <laughs> they don't want to be on the damn camera. <laughs> So here is the, the yellow that's going to be for a horn. So this one goes to the ignition wire back there, and the green one goes to the, the um, damn it, the other wire. But the problem is, what are we going to do with all these wires here? See, there's no reason for these to be up here. These are supposed to go to the, the rest of it. That doesn't make sense why these are in the back. So 
I'll have to figure this out because there's no reason for these other two wires to be in the back of the bike. They don't go to the back of the bike. So I'm not sure what that harness was being used for originally. Oh, sorry. All right. All right. We'll be back later.